Hello and welcome wherever you are. I'm Melvin Wood, the Minister of Blort Hill Church and Interim Moderator at St Columba Gallic Church, Glasgow, Scotland. It's good to have you with us as you join us for our worship today. This is the Sunday service for members and friends of Blort Hill and it's also the English language service for our friends at St Columba's. A new Gallic service has been posted on the YouTube Gallic Church channel, Uclish Gallic Erloina. And today it's conducted by Dr Duncan Snedden, Gallic Development Officer for the Church of Scotland. The service comes to you from Blort Hill Church Hall in the West End of Glasgow. All through the coronavirus pandemic, although church services have been suspended, our church building has remained open in order to carry on the work of Glasgow North West Food Bank. And our team of volunteers has been turning out to keep running the essential service which is needed more than ever to address the issue of food poverty and social deprivation in Scotland. Each and every one of our volunteers is committed to the cause of social justice and we salute them for their willingness to come here and to keep the work going, collecting donations, sorting the provisions and distributing them to people in need. However, the reason we in Blowart Hill Church decided to set up the food bank in the first place and to give it space to operate rent-free is because of our commitment to Jesus Christ. Justice for the poor and the disadvantaged was always top of Jesus' agenda. And his followers, um, as his followers, we, we strive to follow his example. And in particular, we take note today that Jesus fed the hungry. Matthew records that when we have to answer to God for the way we lived our lives, he won't ask us how often we went to church. Instead, he will judge us on our commitment to welcoming the stranger and feeding the hungry. Later, Kyle McCormick, our food bank manager, will be giving us an update on the work of the food bank during the COVID-19 crisis. But now, let us draw near to God, who loves us and cares for us always. Isaiah the prophet writes, If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness. Our first praise is the hymn, Come Thou Soul Transforming Spirit. It was quite hard to find hymns for our theme today that speak of Jesus feeding the hungry and which are also out of copyright. It's challenging enough for us to keep a roof over our heads and do all our other work without paying even more for broadcasting licenses. So that's why I'm asking you to forgive us for our apparent love of Victorian hymns with all their these and thous. But we'd rather spend our limited resources on mission and Christian service. Anyway, we have put the words to well-known tunes so you can sing along if you want to. Come, thou soul-transforming spirit, bless the sower and the seed. Let each heart thy grace inherit. Raise the weak, the hungry feed. Let's draw together with God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we join from many different homes in one congregation. Thank you for drawing us together and for the new freedoms we have in the week to come to travel and visit loved ones. We are sorry for the times we have not lived up to your hopes for us in the last week. We ask you to forgive all our sins through him who died for us and rose to everlasting life. Loving God, 
you are always ready to feed us with your living word. Help us to work for justice in our world so that the hungry are fed, greed is curbed, and the most vulnerable are protected. And may your name be ever glorified and your kingdom advanced. We pray this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our reader today is Lorna McLean, and she is going to read first from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, reading there from verse 9, and then a New Testament reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, reading from verse 31. So first, the reading from Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 9. Isaiah 58, 9 to 12. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like at the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. You shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. Matthew 25 verses 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, When was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king answered them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hello everyone. I'm here in Block Hill Church at our food bank. It's been another very busy day for us today, as it has been throughout the pandemic. We currently have three food bank centres open. Block Hill Pies Church on a Tuesday and Friday. We've got Rock Hill Kelvin Side Pies Church on a Thursday. And we've got our new food bank centre open in Centre 81 in Clyde Bank, which is open Monday to Friday. In the last three months, we have given out over 18,500 meals. This is about our normal for this time of year. One of uh, Some of the reasons on why we are able to continue doing what we are doing is because of our volunteers. We have always got an amazing team of volunteers helping us, some of which just now have had to stop volunteering because they are shielding for themselves or their children for their families. We've had an influx of people wanting to volunteer with us as well and that has helped bridge that gap in our volunteers and they have been absolutely tremendous, so dedicated, so warm and welcoming and they just bonded brilliantly as part of the team. Food donations have been absolutely key to keeping us running. We've built up amazing partnerships. The food bank turned seven in in May, a couple months ago now, and we've got long-standing partnerships with Tesco's, Sainsbury's, 
Waitrose. And we've built an even stronger relationship just now with Morrison's in Angsland. We've got the normal donations that people go into supermarkets and they donate. At the start of the pandemic, the start of the lockdown, people were starting to panic buy. And things like toilet roll flying off the shelves and all was empty. Milk, a, a lot of food items just became really difficult to, to get from the shops. So that had an impact on our donations. And we are very, very fortunate to be part of the Trust for Trust Food Bank Network because they struck up an amazing partnership with Tesco to which Tesco donated food directly. This was, stuff that, this was food that Tesco gave us. It wasn't stuff that customers had bought for the food bank. And it was being delivered to us by the British Gas, Scottish Gas. And... That lasted for about 12 weeks. That partnership has now ended because they've gone back to work. They're not, th these are drivers that would have been otherwise furloughed. And it was a great op opportunity for them to keep driving and keep the, the country going. Um, and this was across the whole of the UK. The Tesco food came to about one and a half tonne a month. Now. In some aspects, it looks like we have a lot of food, but we knew this was coming to an end. And our partnership with Morrison's, again, was money. It was Morrison's were giving us the food as opposed to customers buying the food. And all good things have to come to an end. So now we're relying more heavily again on donations from the public. And we're going to, the donations we've had, we've kind of built up over the last few months, are going to have to see us through the next few months. Normally we've got a major collection um, at Christmas with one particular supermarket. That's not likely to be happening this year. And we don't know with the way people's finances have been through the year now with the pandemic, how people are going to be able to donate at Christmas when it comes to Christmas. So we're always thinking for just now to make sure we have enough food on our shelves today. And we're also looking at the next few months down the line as well. The food bank has not stopped throughout the pandemic. We have kept going. We need to. And our view, the view that I try to put, project onto volunteers and to organisations was as long as supermarkets are open, our food bank will be open too. We need to be, because people have to have food. They have to, if you can't afford to go to the shops, then we ha the food bank has to remain here to help those that can't afford it. Normally, when the food bank is open, we have conversations with the clients to see about w what's wrong with their finances, what organisations can help them, and how can we better improve their situations. With the pandemic just now, those conversations are much more difficult to have because we can't, we're not allowing clients into the building. But it doesn't stop us from trying to have those conversations and the, the difference that this is making on families and individuals is absolutely immense. We're grateful for having the continued presence here in Blort Hill to do the food bank and it's looking at how things have been with the economy and the reasons behind why the food bank is here. Sadly, it looks like the food bank is going to be around for a lot longer than what we'd once anticipated. I hope you've got some good information from the food bank today. And uh, thank you for joining me as I share this information. I said at the beginning that we try to make social justice top of our agenda at our church, just as it was important to Jesus. Kyle has been telling us about the work of our food bank, which it's been doing recently, and I'm grateful for him taking the time out of a busy food bank day to do that. As Christians, we need to know not just what we're doing, but why we're doing it. Many would put it down simply to having a social conscience and a kindly heart. We see people, families who struggle for a variety of reasons to put food on the table and wanting to help them is just the decent thing to do. 
there but for the grace of God go any of us. The BBC's One Show was reporting on food banks last week, and ours was one of them. And one lady said, every one of us, no matter how well off we are now, is only three paychecks away from needing a food bank. But for people of faith, there's more to it than that. Desire for social justice is tied up with who God is and with our relationship to God. We believe that there is more to our existence than just this present life on earth. And while there's no adequate language or picture or even metaphor to describe life beyond this one, everything the Bible says points to the importance of having a close relationship with God and empathy for how he wants us to live this life here, since in some way it's a preparation for an even more important life hereafter. Jesus spoke clearly about going to be with the Father, and in our Gospel reading, he indicated what our life priorities should be if we wanted to get close to the heart of the Father right now. Not our piety, not our holiness, not our adherence to the customs of religious life, but things like visiting the prisoner, giving the destitute shelter, welcoming the incomer, feeding the poor. But this teaching was nothing new. Jesus grew up with the Hebrew scriptures. He knew them inside out, and he would have been familiar with the teaching of the prophet Isaiah. In the passage Lorna read, Isaiah had been reflecting on the practice of fasting as an act of penitence. Isaiah argued that if the act of fasting did not produce sorrow for sin and did not promote the putting away of sin, then it was no true fast. The ritual itself was not enough. The exiles, of whom Isaiah was writing, were boasting about their fasting, but the prophet condemns it as heartless, dead work, and therefore worthless in the sight of God. Isaiah draws the same conclusion when he turns next to consider the laws of Moses that instruct generosity to the poor and the exile. Sometimes the depth of the meaning in the original Hebrew gets lost in translation. Our reading today said, If you offer your food to the hungry, then your light shall rise. You will look good in the sight of humanity and God. But there's more to it than that. The original Hebrew actually doesn't ever mention the word food in giving your food to the hungry. Instead it says, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, your darkness shall be your noonday light. That's a more literal translation of what the original Hebrew says. So your spirit will begin to grow if, when you meet a hungry person, you don't only give them food, but give them something of yourself as well. If the act of feeding the hungry were to be done merely as a duty, then it might satisfy the hunger of the individual person, but it would count for nothing in the life of the giver. It would be an example of the kind of work that James in the New Testament in his letter condemns because it does not justify a person in God's eyes. The idea of drawing out your soul to the hungry implies not merely giving the hungry person food, but giving it with sympathy and compassion as well. A person's faith is never justified in God's eyes by doing good works. It must be accompanied by love. At the end of the day, it's love that will get us close to God, because God himself is love, and he created us in love not by any amount of good works. Divine love should be the inspiration for any act of kindness or compassion. The Christian motive for feeding the hungry is thus twofold. One, to relieve hunger and promote social justice. And two, to live out our love of God in a way that draws us even nearer to God until that nearness is transformed, fulfilled, and completed by our passing from life on earth to life everlasting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for evermore. Amen. 
Now our prayer. It's a slight adaptation of the Scottish ecumenical prayer for today that I've been sharing with you for these last few weeks. Let us pray. We pray, Lord, we come to you as we are, for we can come no other way. We come acknowledging the burdens we carry and trusting in your promise of rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come to you in the sure knowledge that we are not alone. We come in the company of all who know the challenge of these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come to you acknowledging that you have already come to us. We journey to the place where you are to be found and rediscover that you have always been with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come to you as the one who delights in our glad service, done not out of duty but out of love. Set us free from all notions of religion as a binding duty, and liberate us to serve you now by serving the least and the most needy in true compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come to you through the one who is the same yesterday, today and forever. May he hold our lives safe as we embrace the future and the promise of his rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Now, the Lord's Prayer, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. I said that I was struggling to find hymns that spoke of feeding the hungry that we didn't have to pay for with a license that we can't afford. Well, I found this one as well. It's called Beyond Bethsaida's Borders. And this hymn tells of the time that Jesus went off to a lonely place to rest, but was pursued by people anxious to hear his teaching. After he taught them, they were hungry. And the result was the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. It sets the simple principle for us that when Jesus was confronted with hungry people, he didn't lobby Parliament, he didn't write to his MP, he didn't write essays about social deprivation, he didn't open a drop-in shelter, he just fed them. And he gave us a wonderful example to follow. The hymn ends with the observation that even if we as individuals can only do a small amount to help, like the little boy with the five loaves and the two fishes, Jesus takes our gifts and by his blessing enables those gifts to grow and to be sufficient. It's a lovely hymn. Beyond Bethsaida's borders, the weary Saviour went.
Now may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you and all whom you love this day and for evermore. Amen. So it's been good to share worship and Christian fellowship with you. Have a look at our Blowart Hill website as always at www.blowarthillchurch.org and also our St Columba website at www.highlandcathedral.org.uk. You can make an online donation to either of our congregations from the donate facility on these websites and we greatly appreciate all the support we get. Remember to like and subscribe this video and do remember our congregations in your prayers. Goodbye for now, stay safe and thank you for joining us.